But to be truthful, this hurts. It hurts me, and I know it hurts our organization. Yeah, here's how Vegas sees it. You look at this from Caesar Sportsbook by William Hill. The Warriors' odds to win it all drop from eight to one to twenty to one, and their odds to come out of the West double as well. So let's talk about this here a little bit as we have Woj back with us, and Jalen Rose is getting up early with us this morning as well. Woj, uh, for those who haven't heard, the Warriors are making some moves, right? They get some flexibility based on this injury, and they're not just choosing to sit out this season. Uh, that's right, Greeny. They, they're finalizing a trade with Oklahoma City. They're going to bring in. Uh, Kelly Oubre uh, and his $14.4 million into a trade exception uh, that they had. He'll cost the Warriors in salary and luxury tax $80 million next season. But uh, certainly it was, maybe one of the best available wings, uh, he came over to Oklahoma City from Phoenix in that Chris Paul trade, and he'll just move on uh, to uh, the Warriors. They're going to send a 2021 first-round pick to Oklahoma City. And so that gives them certainly uh, – a player who they could plug into the starting lineup, who can come off the bench, who can score the ball. But obviously you're not replacing Clay Thompson. He's a Hall of Fame player and, and part of, with Steph Curry, the, the best backcourt in the NBA when they're healthy. For sure. So, Jalen, we look at the Warriors. It's Steph, it's Draymond, it's Wiggins, it's Wiseman who they draft, and now Kelly Oubre. What are they in the Western Conference? The Warriors are a team that's going to be scratching and clawing Greeny to try and make the playoffs. If you think about the trek of their greatness of making five straight NBA Finals, winning three championships, the latter two came when they added Kevin Durant. And that's because the Western Conference started to catch up. And when we start talking about the top players in the league, I think people should now put some respect on Klay Thompson's name. Because I've always described him as one of the top 12 or 15 players in the league. Just think about this. He's a five-time All-Star. He's an all-defensive player. He has the NBA record for most threes in a quarter, most points in a quarter, Greeny. Like, this guy is so effective, so efficient, and so low maintenance. He scored 60 points in a basketball game and only dribbled 19 times. Mm. And why does that matter? That means other people around him are able to facilitate. Draymond Green is still able to get off. Steph is able to do his catch and shoot. You want to add KD? fine. He'll still find a way to blend in. And then sometimes when it mattered the most for the Warriors, game six clay, that's a real thing. That's a real thing. If it wasn't for game six clay, KD probably never even joins the Warriors. I love Kelly Oubre. He's one of those guys that always look deeper into the box score. <coughs> and I was scratching my head that the Wizards let him go. He was a 19-point scorer last year. He's going to give him competitiveness. He's going to give him toughness. But when you look at the landscape of the Western Conference, there's so many elite players. There's so many franchise caliber guys that I just believe if the Golden State Warriors make the playoffs, it will be a first-round exit. Once they got so, in. So, yeah, I, I'm with you on all of that. And, and Thompson is so clutch. All right, it's a terrible loss. It's a terrible story. Meanwhile, uh, Woj, the Gordon Hayward thing is fascinating. What happened yesterday with Boston, and what does his future look like? Well, his agent, Mark Bartelstein, told me that he is he's opted out of the $34 million in his contract this season. So he's got a few options here. He and Mark Bartelstein have been working through with the Celtics sign and trade scenarios. He can obviously sign as a free agent with a team that has salary cap space. There are a lot fewer of those, and, and they're not all maybe teams that kind of fit where Gordon Hayward is in his career. But, uh, you know, the sign and trade route where, where he can get an extension, Boston can get some players back that match up to his money, uh, you know, that's going to be continued to be discussed today. Indiana's a team that has had interest. We know Gordon Hayward's from Indianapolis. I know that uh, scenario is one that appeals to him, uh, but I think for Hayward, you know, he's going to try to find a place where he can get a long-term deal. Uh, he was headed into the fourth year of that big free agent deal he had signed with the Celtics coming from Utah. What do you think, Jalen? Where should Gordon Hayward, where would he look best to you? Indiana. I played there almost six years, Greeny. That's where he grew up. I followed him when he played at Butler. And I think he'd be a great fit for the Pacers. You pair him with Victor Oladipo and Malcolm Brogdon. The Pacers have always been one of those teams in the East, just like the Portland Trailblazers in the West. And this is why I was disappointed they fired Nate McMillan. That when you look down at the standings, you're like, wait a minute, the Pacers aren't fourth? 
they always seem to outplay expectations. And so Gordon Hayward coming off an injury, returning to the Celtics, he was actually effective. But when you have Jalen Brown and you have Jason Tatum and Marcus Smart and, T and, and so many – and Kimball Walker, it's just not enough basketballs for Gordon Hayward, a guy that could create off the dribble, play and pick and roll, and has been an all-star in this league in a 20-point score. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.